Between 2019 and 2021, about 19 offices of the Independent National Electoral Commission have been gutted by fire. The most of the incidents have occurred in majorly three states, namely Akwaibum, Abia, Anambra and Imo states. Others are Boronu, Eboin, Kanu, the FCT, Ondo and others. While some were burnt by hoodlums, others took place under mysterious circumstances. Could all these attacks be a means to undermine the upcoming 2023 elections? And also, what are the financial implications of these attacks? Well, joining us to discuss this is Festus Okoye. He is the Chairman, Information and Voter Education for the Independent National Electoral Commission. He's joining us live from Abuja. Thank you very much, Mr. Okoye, for joining us. Thank you so much. I mean, the first question on everybody's minds is, why is INEC all of a sudden a target? And why is arson uh, the order of the day for 19 of your offices? Well, we, we really don't want to speculate relating to the motives uh, for this particular attack. Uh, but as you know, um, INEC offices are symbol, uh, part of the symbols of our democracy. Um, and they house sensitive and non-sensitive electoral, electoral materials. Uh, so when these offices are attacked, uh, they destroy sensitive electoral materials, uh, they destroy this part of the symbols of our democracy, and, and they also lead to, uh, it also leads to a setback in relation to our preparations for elections. Unfortunately, uh, some of these offices we are, are prototype offices, and some of them we are really no renovated, uh, preparatory to the conduct of the 2023 elections. Uh, but what we are having in, in, a, in, in, in within a period of uh, three weeks, we had attacks in three of our offices. Uh, so many materials were destroyed, cubicles were destroyed, um, ballot boxes were destroyed, generators were destroyed, sensitive electron materials were destroyed, uh, GP tanks were destroyed, and so on. Uh, so we, we are really, really worried because we feel and we have felt that it is important for us uh, to begin early to prepare for the 2023 elections. And we have audited all the materials in all our 774 local governments uh, to know the materials we still have in stock and also the ones we have uh, where there is a shortfall uh, so that we can begin to replace some of these materials uh, before the 2023 elections. Uh, but with this pet of attacks, uh, uh, it's, it's difficult for us uh, to really keep uh, a tab of what we have and what we need to replace, and it's quite unfortunate. It, it, it makes me really wonder, um, when, it, when INEC does finish elections and, you know, life continues as it was, um, is there a concern for where these things are stored? What is the protection level that is being put because I mean I've driven I've driven by I've gone to I've interviewed people in INEC offices and it's not as secured as one would want it to be is it because maybe you didn't see this coming you didn't expect that these kind of things would be happening um, I mean you have been in the field over and over and you've seen people take ballot boxes and people come with guns why not protect the offices where these ballot boxes and pulling um, you know um, 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 offices are why why can't we think of that i know i mean the government does have its work cut out for is we're dealing with boko haram and banditry i mean this is another issue br to be brought to the attention of the federal government but can INEC look at other ways of securing its offices especially because of the sensitive materials that are in them you know the conduct of election is a massive electoral operation and because it's a massive electoral operation, uh, the commission has uh, uh, zonal stores where some materials are kept, both sensitive and non-sensitive materials. And then we also keep uh, some of the materials at our local government offices, and we try as much as possible uh, to employ security uh, uh, guards uh, to protect some of these materials. Uh, but when you have our assassins who are determined uh, to wreak havoc on, uh, havoc on our offices, there's very, very little you, you, you can do. And you know that our country is going through a very, very difficult period now, through a very, very uh, cha cha challenging phase. The security agencies are, um, are having uh, uh, their own challenges and their own difficulty. And then the commission is also having difficulty uh, keeping tag of some of our offices and, and also protecting them uh, to the extent that we can secure our electoral materials. Uh, it is on the basis of this that 
Uh, the commission has summoned an emergency meeting with all its uh, resident electoral commissioners uh, for Wednesday next week. And thereafter, on Friday, we are going to meet at the level of the Interagency Consultative Committee on Election Security with all the security agencies uh, for us to map out clear strategies on how uh, to protect these national assets, these national monuments, and these symbols of our, of our democracy. You don't, some of the materials that are, we have in these offices, you don't buy them off the shelf. Uh, some of these materials take between six uh, months and, um, and, and 12 months uh, to procure. And uh, so when these materials are pumped, uh, it creates very challenging problems for us. Now, for instance, these uh, local government offices, uh, we have just finished auditing the materials we have in these offices. These offices and the staff in these offices are in charge of the expansion of um, voter access to the polling units that we are carrying out, and they have just completed that particular, that particular process. We are about to call, uh, restart the continuous uh, voters registration exercise, and they are the managing directors of this particular exercise. So when you burn these offices and chase the staff away, the implication is that you want electoral activities uh, to come to a halt, and that is very dangerous for our democracy because uh, some of the elections we conduct are time-bound, they are circumscribed by timelines. And when you don't conform to those timelines uh, and time frames, you create a constitutional crisis. And that is why we are starting early and we are preparing early. And these uh, attacks are a huge setback on our preparations for the 2023 general election. It makes me want to push you a bit more on this, um, because I remember the drama that happened um, before INEC was able to get, you know, the finances for uh, preparations for the last elections that we had. And 2023 is just around the corner. You just have one year in between and a couple of months before the end of 2021. And you're talking about procurement and the timeline. So of obviously we have a setback right now but of course you have to still make um you, like you said you've taken inventory you're still going to have to come up with you know an invoice or an inventory another inventory for the ones that you have lost to the national assembly asking for funding and of course if that stretches it also affects the time that you need to get these things back into the country for us to have an election so where does that leave us in 2023 knowing how things happen in nigeria and the length of time that it takes well uh, this this commission is determined not to allow some of these things uh, to set us back in relation uh, to our uh, plans and preparations for the 2023 general election uh, but the implication is that uh, some of these uh, um, uh, in some of these local governments uh, we are not going to have the services of our main office uh, for, for the running of this election. Uh, because if you want to uh, uh, reconstruct these offices, you have to um, uh, uh, award contracts, uh, uh, conform to the uh, Procurement um, Act, uh, conform to uh, so, some, other, some other things, and then get these offices ready. So the implication is that we may have to conduct these elections and some of the electoral activities uh, from a rented office. And secondly, you have to, we have to also uh, uh, approach the National Assembly to appropriate funds for the reconstruction of these offices whenever they will need to reconstruct them. And then for some of the materials that have been uh, da damaged, we have to also approach the National Assembly uh, for purposes of um, uh, procuring them. And so that is not a very comfortable position to be in. But we are determined not to allow these test setbacks uh, to roll back uh, some of the gains we have made. We are going to recover quickly and we are going to make sure uh, that um, uh, some of these setbacks uh, uh, we do not affect our preparations uh, for the 2023 elections. So we are determined to pull through with the 2023 elections uh, despite all these challenges and despite all these setbacks. I'm going to ask you a question that you may choose to answer or you may choose not to answer. Um, many have called this a sabotage of sorts, and many have said that people are angry with INEC as to the fact that they've considered some of the results and the electioneering process skewed and not free, not necessarily credible. Um, do you think that this is why INEC has been targeted? I, I, I really believe that um, the, 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 the confidence of the Nigerian people in relation uh, to the activities of the commission has increased uh, in the in the last few years. Um, I just came back from verification exercise in the in the in the in all the states in the northwest, and the people are very happy with some of the policies and programs 
that we have put in place. And Nigerians are looking forward uh, to the resumption of the continuous uh, uh, registration of voters. So I believe that Nigerians are happy with the commission. Nigerians believe that this commission is on the right trajectory and, this, the, and that this commission has the capacity and the courage uh, to deliver on credible elections. We, we, if, you, if you recall, uh, during the NSAS protest in, in, in the Gold State, some of the protesters went to our office and only took away the, uh, the, the flag and also commended the commission for organizing credible elections uh, in a those state. So I believe that Nigerians uh, are happy with the activities of the commission. Uh, they are happy with what we did in a those state. They are happy with uh, our conduct of elections in all those states. And they are happy with uh, all the by-elections that we have conducted. And so I think that there's a new vigor and a regeneration in relation to the activities of the commission. So I do not see this as um, um, uh, people being angry with the commission. I think that uh, they see uh, the commission as one of the symbols of our democracy and some of the uh, symbols of uh, federal presence in some of these local governments. But I don't want to speculate until um, we have um, a report and, uh, of investigation by the security agencies in relation to some of these attacks. Um, well, you have cited the fact that you've done by elections and by elections, and you think that that has restored confidence. But if we were to put statistics, let's work with statistics. The number of people that came out to vote in um, the 2019 elections, the 2015 elections, and the elections before that, the numbers keep diminishing. They keep dropping. Is that not a pointer to the fact that people have lost hope in the votes in the voting system? because they begin to feel that, or they've, they've had the feeling over time that their votes do not necessarily count. So my question is, how is INEC, what is INEC going to do, other than voter education, to um, restore that confidence to the average Nigerian voter that their vote does really count and magic doesn't happen between the polling units and of course where the results are finally being read? Well, uh, there are so, so many things account for uh, a voter party and low voter turnout uh, during, during the elections. And I really don't want to go into uh, uh, all of them. But the truth of the matter is that this expansion of vote, uh, access uh, to the polling units that the commission is embarking on, and also relocating uh, some of the voting points and voting point settlements to either unserved or underserved areas, we definitely increase uh, uh, people's access uh, to the polling units, it will also make it impossible uh, for some level of inclusion for persons living with uh, for persons uh, for persons with disability to approach the polling units without so much uh, hazard. It will make it possible uh, for pregnant women uh, to leave their houses in the morning, vote and go home. It will also make it possible uh, for, for, for women uh, who have children at home to spend less time at the polling units and then go home and, uh, and attend to uh, some other challenges. It will make it possible for the elderly uh, to, to, to vote. Uh, so I believe that with all the things we are doing, with this uh, expansion of uh, uh, access to the polling units, with the continuous voter registration exercise, with the online portal that we are going to uh, roll out, there will definitely be increased activity in our polling units. And we are hopeful uh, that voter turnout will increase and then that the other stakeholders will also do their own bit to make sure that we have a very uh, a good voter turnout during subsequent elections. Well, uh Festus Okoye is the Chairman of Information and Voter Education with the Independent National Electoral Commission. Thank you very much for speaking with us. We appreciate it. Thank you very much, and I wish you well. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break now, and when we come back, I will give you my take. Here's my take. The only thing that the average Nigerian has in, as a voice at the end of the day, to hold every politician accountable is their vote. Now, for every Nigerian who's lost hope out there saying, my vote doesn't count anymore, what's the essence of going out? Well, you still have that vote, because whether you vote or not, you have made the choice. But wouldn't you rather make that choice consciously, making sure that you are there, you've casted your vote, so that you have a right to demand for the dividends of democracy when the need arises, so that you have a voice to say, well, I came out, I voted, and you're now in office, your responsibility is to me. Other than just staying back or saying, well, 
I don't care who wins. Uh, whoever gives me money, I will take. Let's stop that attitude. We need to be very, very conscious. We need to be very deliberate about our actions as it now. Look around you. Is this the Nigeria that you bargained for? Is this what you were promised by the politicians when they came to your doorsteps four years ago, eight years ago, 15 years ago, or 16 years ago? Is this what you were bargained for? Is this what you asked the politicians to do for you? Is this the life that you asked them for? Has it been better or has it been worse? This is the time for you to make that choice by making sure if you do not have a voter's card, go get one, go get registered and get a voter's card because your vote is your power. I am Mariana Cole, thanking you for watching.